to analyze surveys using partial list square structure equation modeling we can just go here create new project give it a name and then we can create and import data and we create the model after we import the data so the model can be drawn easily and here we have a model that has already been drawn that is called the unified uh, theory of acceptance and use of technology that consists of these variables or constructs as we call them these are what we call latent constructs performance ex expectancy effort expectancy social influence and facilitating conditions in addition to behavioral intention and use behavior and these are the different liquid scale items or indicators or what we call observed uh, variables PE1 to PE4, these are four items that are combined together to form the composite score of performance expectancy or the latent construct. And these arrows indicate the uh, direction of the effect uh, of performance expectancy on behavioral intention. To what extent does performance expectancy predict positive or negative, let's say, change on behavioral intention and to what extent does behavioral intention in turn predict uh, uh, use behavior of certain technology like a website or tool or a model, uh, etc. So we, we just to test the this model and this theory, we can uh, analyze it using a structural uh, equation modeling that consists of the measurement model. That, uh, that is about the relationship between the indicators and the uh, latent constructs. And here the arrows again can be either reflective or formative, depending on the direction of these uh, arrows. So this is a reflective model since the arrows are directed towards the indicators, as you can see. Uh, and then we have the factor loadings that should be uh, 0.5 or above for uh, an indicator to be kept and the Cronbach alpha reliability of all of these indicators should be equal to 0.7 and above for good reliability. If there are some uh, reverse coded items, they can impact the reliability or some negatively worded uh, items. They can just impact also the factor loadings and they can be uh, good candidates or potential candidates for deletion or removal in the subsequent uh, additions or modifications of the model we have the initial model and then we have the final model so suppose that we have this model we need to test the partial list square so they said the measurement model is the relationship between the uh, indicators and the constructs or latent constructs and the structural model is the relationship uh, or the relationships among the different constructs so these are the two uh, models and uh, simply put and instead of running one regression test, we can run a lot of regression tests. So this is what uh, a structural equation modeling allows us to do. And it also allows us to uh, test the interaction between some variables because the relationship can be either direct or indirect through moderation and mediation. So structural equation modeling can help us uh, test whole models and whole theories against the data that's why we talk about model fit like to what extent the theory fits the observed data so this is the idea in in, in, in experimental and social sciences uh, so here we just go to calculate and then uh, palace same algorithm and then we can just uh, run the model by keeping everything in default and click start calculating and here you could see the R square, the average variance extracted, the composite reliability, Cronbach alpha, etc. So here we could just keep the R square. This is the R square. So to what extent these uh, predictors have an impact on this outcome variable? So they explain 35.3% of the variance in the and uh, this variable. So the more variables we have, the more the um, predictive, uh, let's say, uh, value or this value of the R square can uh, increase. All right. Then we have the outer model and the outer load is an outer weight, depending on whether the model is reflective or uh, uh, formative. So we could just have uh, both of them depending on the model that we have and the inner model. 
that we have uh, contains it contains correlations, covariances, indirect effects, path coefficients, and total effects in addition to the f square. So this is the inner model, that is the structural model, and the outer model that is called the measurement model. So these are different names, and here we can highlight the uh, path uh, coefficients. As you can see here, this is for the uh, outer model. We can all do the same for the uh, inner model uh, correlations here. So you can see the strength and significance of the correlations depending on the boldness of the line. Like effort expectancy seems to be uh, highly correlated in a positive way with behavioral intention followed by performance expectancy, then social influence, and finally facilitating conditions. So this will indicate not only the relationships, but also their strengths and their significance uh, levels. And this can be done in a very nice visualized uh, format. All right. So here we could just go through these, uh, uh, let's say, headings. Here we have three uh, formats for each display. For example, path coefficients, we can see it as a matrix, as a list, and as bar chart. So here, this is the visualized format. You can obviously see uh, this. And also, the green color indicates some good values, whereas the red color indicates low threshold values, which is good. So here we have the indirect effects, total indirect effects, specific in indirect effects, and these are the uh, what we call the operationalization of the items or the constructs as we call them, not variables, because variables can be just one question, but constructs can be multiple questions combined. All right, so this is how we can go about it. And then we could also uh, test the total effect and then matrix and list we have total effects and then we have outer loadings you can see all the values appear in green which is good you can see them as a list also and then we have the outer weights in case the model is formative so this cannot be relevant in this case but sometimes when we have a model and the arrows this can uh, mean that we have different models that are reflective and formative at the same time then we have residuals quality criteria like the r square and this is the r square for the two indigenous constructs especially behavioral intention and use of technology then we have the f square and then we have the construct reliability so what is good about this is that you can see the green highlighted values and this is the construct reliability and validity depending on the uh, types. So here we have Cronbach Alpha and the average variance extracted all appearing in green, which is nice. And then we have the average variance extracted. You can see it here. In addition to discriminant validity that consists of the heterotrait monotrait ratio uh, of correlations. And then we have Forner Locker criterion and then the cross loadings. Uh, so these are discriminant validity, meaning that to what extent each uh, set of items can be distinguished from other set of items, or each group can be of questions can be distinguished from other groups of questions. This is what we mean by discriminant validity. Then we have uh, convergent validity, meaning to what extent the items can converge together to form a construct. Then this is the collinearity statistics, and is it is measured using the VIF, that is variance inflation factor. And the threshold is set between uh, 3 to 5. And the higher it is, the more, uh, let's say, uh, red it will become. So the color will change here. And it's not good for uh, the, uh, the model. And this is for the outer model. And this is, again, for the inner model, as we have two collinearity statistics, either for the outer model or the inner model. Uh, the outer model meaning the measurement model and the inner model meaning the structural model. Then we have uh, model fit uh, criteria like the ones calculated on analysis of moment structure or AMS. And then we have the algorithms here. So we usually we don't reach these levels here as they cannot be relevant. So what we need is simply the uh, validity of its types, discriminant and convergent in addition to uh, the other one that is path coefficients. Okay, so these are the major uh, two statistical means that we need. 
Then uh, we can also test the bootstrap and we usually set it at 5,000 to 10,000. So let's just keep it at 5,000 because these will have implications on some numbers. The test type here is detailed, meaning that we don't know the direction of some hypothesis, either positive or negative. And then we have the significance level or the p-value that is uh, 0.05. Uh, then we have the random number generator. So the, we, everything is kept at default. And we click start calculating. For the two-tailed here, if you have all the relationships among uh, hypotheses in a one direction, meaning positive or negative, we can just choose one tail. If not, you just choose two tail. Okay, Paris, set, uh, Paris setup here, it should be remain. Uh, should remain like this and then we have the data and uh, we keep it also like this and we start calculating and we wait for the calculation to end and this is the uh, model we have the outer weights loadings and their p-values here uh, the constructs we can have the Cronbach alpha or the r square as you can see so this is the Cronbach alpha that is visually displayed here and then we have the R square and the other statistics. So we could just uh, uh, fix it from here. Usually we choose path coefficients and p-values or path coefficients and t-values. And the t-value that is above uh, one point, I think 70, I will just keep the, the exact value in the description box. This indicates that the path relationship is statistically significant. All right, so these are all the values and uh, their path relationships. Then we have path coefficients, as you can see, the p-values, the original sample or the uh, beta coefficients, the t statistics. As you can notice, the more, the, the more significant the p-values are, the higher the t statistics here. And then we have also total indirect effects, specific indirect effects, and total effects. Uh, among others, then we have outer loadings and outer weights, uh, etc. So usually we just need the path coefficients for hypothesis testing, these ones, especially for the major constructs. Here all the constructs are significant and the one that has the highest impact is uh, this one, uh, that is behavioral intention and use, followed by effort expectancy and behavioral intention, meaning that if a technology is easy to use, people will uh, use it uh, more often. So this is the idea behind this. And uh, we can simply just uh, take these uh, statistics and report them and uh, uh, test our hypotheses accordingly. So this is in brief how to run partial list square structure equation modeling using Smart Paris 4 on a survey data. If you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below and see you soon.